Similar to previous eras of transformation in human history, I believe a major part of the 21st century is going to be focused on the transformation of energy technology towards a structure that is clean, sustainable, distributed, and empowering. To get there, however, I think of the famous quote made 50 years ago by Martin Luther King when he said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. I see a lot of symmetry within the spirit of that statement when it comes to addressing the great environmental challenges of our time, and that definitely it's going to be a long-term journey, but for sure, working hard to resolve those challenges is the correct and moral and responsible thing to do. This is, a, this is a photo from a Sierra Club magazine article I read in 2008 when I was living in Shanghai, China. It shows the contents inside the stomach of a dead bird, an albatross to be specific, that was found, up wash, that was found washed up on an island in the Pacific Ocean. As you can see, there's a couple of hundred pieces of plastic there, including that purple cigarette lighter in the middle that the bird ingested just from trash floating around everywhere in the ocean. Unfortunately, thousands of birds die like this every year in the oceans of the world, ironically, from starvation, even with their bellies being so full. At this point in time back then, this, this article represented for me, basically it crystallized a mounting sense that we as humans are following everyday business as usual practices that are profoundly harmful to the health of our planet and its species, and that a combination of old values and new solutions are needed to empower members of our global community to turn things around. This picture also represented a personal turning point for me that eventually led to a business career focused in clean technology and renewable energy after 23 years in the business world. Rooted in my background as a South Asian Indian and having lived in, in Thailand and China for 10 years, I've been influenced by East Asian philosophies that deeply believe in minimalism, conservation, and ideas such as that all things in the universe are intricately spun together like a web. And that as humans, we should respectfully balance our individual needs with those of the extended family of life. That we should know that the effects of our actions will always return back to us. And also, we should understand that man is not separate from nature. We are linked by spiritual, psychological, and physical bonds. Now fast forwarding to the world today, my, under, my observation is most people would like to adhere to this set of ethos, uh, but they're unable to because the options and choices made available to them in their everyday lives are too limited and not practical enough for mass adoption to take hold. So as a result, our world's most critical natural resources of food, water, energy, materials, and land are becoming more and more scarce due to poor management, but also because of rising pressure from several intersecting megatrends that are upon us now. Starting with our global population that's expected to reach 8.5 billion people by the year 2030, which is less than 15 years from now. And this includes the doubling of the global middle class to add 3 billion new consumers. Aging populations are extending the lifetimes of existing consumers. Rising surface temperatures, extreme climate events, and especially in the, de in the developed world, massive overconsumption of products and services creating tremendous uh, waste and inefficiency. Now to fully tackle these problems, trying to replicate and extend our past 20th century solutions will not be possible because they will result in things like continued deforestation, damaging raw material extraction, pollution cleanup, water depletion, all things that, that the human race can no longer tolerate. Instead, new, disruptive, innovative 21st century technologies and business models are needed that are clean, reliable, cheap, and efficient, and that allow all of us, basically as a civilization, to do more with less. So in the world of energy, the transition from centralized to decentralized or distributed electricity generation is a great example of this 21st century paradigm playing out. In centralized electricity, in the centralized electricity model, a large, usually fossil fuel based power source delivers electricity to a point of consumption, which is, which is typically a home or a building or a factory. In the distributed electricity model, a small, usually renewable energy power source is physically located right at the point of consumption, 
hence minimizing the risk of land disruption, line losses, um, as well as weather catastrophe associated with the centralized model. Also, each point of consumption essentially um, has the ability to act like an individual smart microgrid interconnected to other smart microgrids. A good parallel of this transformation are changes we've seen over the years with respect to things like distributed computers as we've seen mainframe computers migrate to cloud-based laptops and tablets, distributed telephone systems as we've seen hardware phones migrate to mobile smartphones, and even with distributed farming as we've seen the movement away from far away large industrial farms to small local organic farms. With distributed energy, control and choice and energy independence is shifted to the consumer and from a financial perspective risk and productivity gains are efficiently allocated throughout the entire value chain in a way such that a truly market-based impact investment structure focusing on people, planet, and profit can participate and thrive. Solar photovoltaic energy mounted on the rooftop of buildings and homes is by far and away the most common form of distributed energy in the world today. This is a, this is a picture of an uh, installation my company, Green Grid Solar, completed a couple of years ago on the rooftop of a warehouse run by the uh, national retailer Staples. Among its many benefits, solar is affordable with um, equivalent electricity rates reaching grid parity in many places versus conventional fuel sources. It's clean, there's zero emissions, it's uh, minimum water dependence, it's reliable, it requires very low maintenance, uh, the systems last for over 30 years, the solar panels have manufacturer warranties of 20 years or more, and it's efficient, there's no noise, there's no moving parts, and best of all, the raw materials are free and unlimited. So just think about that for a second. You just have to build the asset, you have to just make sure the asset's running properly, and the raw materials that are needed to create the electricity are free and unlimited. They're just coming from the sun, shining up in the sky. So perhaps the greatest benefit of distributed solar energy is the sense of empowerment it can bring to diverse communities in the developing and the developed world. I'd like to show you four examples of this that each demonstrate empowerment through solar access, solar finance, solar simulation, and solar integration. A good example of solar um, access is electrification at the Barefoot College. The Barefoot College is a large NGO based out of India that provides solutions to very poor rural communities in least developed countries. Solar electrification is a very uh, uh, important um, area of focus for the Barefoot College, especially to places that have no electricity uh, for lighting and other basic needs. So far, their solar initiatives have positively impacted 450,000 people in over 1,000 villages in 64 countries in the world. Another big priority for the Barefoot College is to train older women and grandmothers to be solar engineers so that they can learn how to fabricate and install and repair and maintain solar energy systems in their villages, hence creating another path to empowerment and self-sufficiency to those who are most vulnerable and disadvantaged among us in the world. Solar leasing is what my company specializes in, and this Financial tools are a major, reason, a major reason for the explosive growth of solar energy in the United States over the last 10 years. Solar leasing allows a customer that wants to have solar installed on their property but does not want to pay an upfront cost and doesn't want to take the long-term risk of maintenance and operation. So just like leasing a car or leasing a copy machine in your office or even a satellite dish uh, cable service, you just pay for the output of the system instead of buying and owning the entire system itself. This is a picture of a project we did last summer at the New Northside Baptist Church and Community Center in St. Louis, Missouri. The church, when they inquired about solar, they found out that even after incentives, it would cost them 50, over $50,000 to buy the system outright. So instead, they went with a solar lease at a, a they went with a 20-year lease at a solar electricity rate that's 30% below their utilities electricity rate, plus 
they have full proactive and reactive maintenance provided over the entire lease term. So this uh, business model, uh, model innovation uh, has definitely created a sense of empowerment at the church as it's as, um, basically based upon all the positive results the folks have seen so far. Another business model innovation cr um, creating empowerment is through the simulation of solar with community solar. Community solar allows a customer that desperately wants to have access to solar energy but they just can't make it happen because they either live in a high rise or they're renters or they happen to live in a neighborhood that's heavily wooded with lots of shading. So in this model, uh, a group of the customers have the ability to band together and build a solar energy plant at some remote location adjacent, adjacent to where they all live and basically get a virtual credit for the electricity generated by the system through their local um, utility company. So this is an example of a community solar project in Carbondale, Colorado that has over 300 panels and it's owned and divided by 18 people who paid $725 for each panel. So each customer on their monthly utility bill gets credit for the electricity generated by each specific panel that they own in that array hence simulating the same effect as those same panels if they were on the rooftop of their residence. Uh, community solar has basically, uh, it's been a great solution that's becoming more and more popular uh, around the country, especially in areas where forward thinking utilities and regulators are allowing the framework to be put in place to make it happen. Empowerment through the integration of complementary technologies can be seen with smart grid cities and neighborhoods. A good example of this is the Pecan Street Project in Austin, Texas, which is a 711 acre mixed use development that has 1,000 residences, 500, um, uh, 500 homes, 140 apartments, 30 commercial spaces, and three public schools. So in addition to solar energy, the other technologies that are, that are incorporated are energy efficiency, energy efficiency, electric vehicles, battery storage, demand management. And so what basically happens is using web-based software and sophisticated data analysis, all of these technologies are seamlessly integrated together like a beautiful symphony to create a smart grid that allows consumers to do things like monitor and manage at the, to, to monitor and manage the electric, their electricity use of individual appliances and devices in their home. They can set and track utility bill budgets. They can sell excess solar electricity and store battery power back to the grid. They can draw electricity from their electric vehicles to level out peak demand loads in their home at specific moments in time. So smart grid neighborhoods and smart, uh, smart grid cities are a great example of the future of distributed energy where consumers will have much more control of their electricity use and their environmental impact while, um, while uh, um, saving money and also expanding the footprint of clean energy technology. Now these four examples are just a small snapshot of all the opportunities that exist today in the energy space to address the, the megatrends that I mentioned earlier. As, as was stated by um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and by Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> For me, at the end of the day, this means that among all of the world's creatures, we as humans are the only ones that have been given the power to impact the entire world's natural ecological order. And even though we are at the top of the evolutionary pyramid, we have an absolute responsibility to be good nurturers and good stewards of the planet. So, Based upon the theme of this event right here and now, I ask all of you to consider the topics I've covered today in your journey to transform the world and find empowering solutions to the greatest challenges we face as a global community. Thank you.